Hey folks, this is Strong Games, and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. Today we're going to do a video guide uh, get for getting started with the Oracles of Zinch and Kairos Fate Weaver. So, this faction here um, is quite interesting, actually. They um, they are a kind of chaos faction. Um, you will have a special type of corruption for them, Zinch Corruption. You want to uh, kind of build up in your areas and if we kind of just go inspect here it gives you additional control winds of magic and additional ammunition it's a little different than the other types of corruption so just be aware of that um, now they have a couple of really important um, pieces to be aware of so if we go here first they have a uh, reduced battle reinforcement time so if you have multiple armies you get them uh, get access to them more quickly if you fight things manually uh, and they have improved hero action success chance uh, for every character by a significant amount so doing agent actions uh, against other armies is something that this faction is quite good at now they have this specific mechanic called grimoires um, you can get grimoires through you know quite a few different ways uh, you can see them you get them from fighting there are specific buildings um, that can um, can give you a certain number per turn um, and if we go over here, there's this function that's called changing of the ways. So changing of the ways, um, if I click on one of these settlements, it actually has a grimoire cost. Now changing of the ways works a little bit like high elf influence, um, in that you can effectively force certain things to happen to, um, settlements, to different factions, armies, um, that sort of thing. It's a lot more direct though. Um, when you do it with high elves and the influence mechanic, it's kind of, you're influencing the relationship and then just hoping that by like, you know, pulling their, their relationship really down, then they declare war on each other or, um, trying to confederate somebody by improving the relationship. Zinch's, um, changing of the ways are much more, um, you know, direct. You can force two factions to declare war on each other, um, using grimoires you can transfer settlements you can do all of the different things that are listed here and you actually research these with the tech tree so that's kind of a good um, thing to be aware of now because it's um, a chaos faction they also have the unholy manifestations and there are different pieces that go in here this is for um, basically getting a lot of cor uh, zinch corruption everywhere and they do participate in the great game so you can get uh, the ascendancy showing up occasionally now one of the things that you want to do here towards the beginning of this faction or towards the beginning uh, of uh, kind of a campaign with this faction is this province right here is the one that you start with um, and you want to make securing this a goal so this faction or this kind of settlement actually travels over this direction and so what we'll do first here is we'll fight these guys. And again, I would actually fight most of these battles manually at the beginning. You'll do probably quite better than the auto-resolve. And one of the things that this faction struggles with really early on is, is money. So taking offerings as tribute is really good. But the one thing to be a little bit careful of with this faction here is if you look closely at this, there's actually two bars here. There's a, a blue bar that's on top and a, a life bar that's underneath. Um, being really careful about the health of your units because you kind of can't see it super well. So this blue bar is actually a barrier. So they take a little bit of extra damage um, before it eats into their HP. I'm going to replenish here to start with. Um, you can take the money if you fight that battle manually, but I want to roll directly into uh, into the settlement here. Now, so this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory. Again, I would fight this manually um, normally, but we'll take that there. Now, here you have the option to sack, raise, loot and occupy. You get grimoires for doing different things. Um, I'm going to loot and occupy this settlement right away. You can actually sit here and, and kind of sack this a little bit because these guys aren't particularly strong if you look at where their strength rank is. They are very, very weak. They don't have much for an army. Um, so you can beat up on them for a while just to level Kairos up. But I like to take this area relatively quickly. 
and you'll see me do something here that just is kind of a um, I'm kind of playing with things. I want to build this building here eventually um, to get this, but I really don't want it in this settlement. So I'm going to demolish it there. I'm going to rebuild it here, and then I want this faction to um, or this region to grow. And we are going to be in this area for a while, so typically like to come here. And this army off the bat is honestly pretty poor. Um, it also had some Chaos Furies in it, but it does have a couple um, pretty good units. The, the Exalted Flamer, um, even these Pink Horrors are quite good. But a really decent uh, unit early on is actually these Marauders. They have really quite good melee defense, um, and they're anti-large, so if you do get some uh, kind of intrusions from either the Nurgle faction or um, there is a Lizardman faction off to the west, as well as the High Elves, this anti-large can be not bad. I usually get a couple of those units to start with, just to flesh out the ranks. Um, and because, if you look closely here, you know, these Blue Horrors have actually taken a lot of damage. They're almost dead. If I was to merge these, they would merge into a single unit. Um, Kairos' campaign is a little bit of a slow start, but you do want to take the time to build up. One thing that's interesting for him, um, specifically, is he starts with four points already um, filled in, in there. So I typically like to pick this one, and then this is um, quite a quite a good spell to start with. So it's this one. Um, you can go through all of these different options here. Um, I tend to uh, either take the ambush chance or the increased control, but for now we'll we'll just pick this one. Then we go to the cultist here. I like to f spend the first two points in those two because improving Seenshu's corruption is important. Um, you've got to deal with the Nurgle corruption that's already in this region, um, and you want to uh, make sure that you kind of weed that out quickly so that you can get him uh, him going. So with that, we've kind of got our first turn mostly done, but we're going to go into the tech stuff here. So there are a couple of really quite strong um, things to select right off the bat. I pretty much always take this one um, just because it gives an, a little bit of extra armor to those marauders which are pretty good in the early early game but it just reduces your recruitment cost um, for units across the board and you're gonna recruit lots of lots of units. This one's also not terrible um, just because it unlocks um, the ability to open gates uh, and as well as just increased casualty replenishment for um, for your heroes and things like that. So there is lots to pick from here. Honestly, you can kind of pick whatever you like. Um, one thing just to be aware of is that some of these things do cost um, do cost grimoires to to research, and they actually open up additional options in the changing of the ways section. So be aware of that. And we will. I'm actually going to repair this right away. Just because. So, I talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but what I like to do in this campaign is secure this province at the bottom, um, and then I like to go after Teclas pretty early. Um, because one of the biggest problems this faction has is income, um, and getting another, you know, region that, that earns a decent amount right off the bat can be a good thing. Um, Scouting around the area can be really good too. The Lizardman faction that's kind of off to the west can be a little bit annoying. Um, but this faction here is is honestly they're they're pretty weak. Um, and then here you can go and you can actually you know build just about whatever you like here. I tend to like to build this um, unit because I want to start working my way up to uh, to there. Sorry, that building there. Upgrade this for some more growth, and then here, you know, we want to we want to let these units come back a little bit, get a few more, um, and so in the meantime, we don't want to waste time. We'll just come over here and start scouting out what's going to go on. Now, Zinch's uh, victory conditions early on, he has one of the like he's got lots of actions on the list to do, even get the short campaign victory, 
but the Fortress of Dawn is actually already destroyed. So it's kind of a weird uh, initial victory condition in that one of them starts right away because the Lore Masters occupy it. These guys are another one that you want to get rid of. Uh, these guys are up just a little bit further and the last defenders are up even further. So one of the good strategies with Zinch is kind of take the this bottom area and then start working your way up in this direction as well as you can work your way up in this direction too. So I like to go this way just because that's tied to the campaigns or tied to the um, factions you need to destroy. The other thing is, is that the Bubonic Swarm is like right here, that's these guys, but the Poxmakers of Nurgle are quite a ways away. So they start up over here and usually end up in this area. You kind of hope somebody else kills them because um, it's going to take you a while to work your way over uh, to that area. And that's kind of your your victory conditions. Overall, Kairos is a pretty good um, lord. He's an excellent caster. So if you look close at his specific abilities, um, he does have improved ambush defense chance. And it's really hard for heroes to take action against his army. So those are two um, really good starting benefits there for him. Um, he also has specific items that can adjust his uh, his spells as well. Um, these are uh, kind of the initial pieces here. So you don't get these for a little while in the campaign. Um, this is a pretty good um, piece here. It just improves your barriers. And, you know, with, with Kairos, it, uh, he's a really good caster. You're going to cast quite a bit um, with him. In, in a lot of your battles. I recommend fighting a lot of them manually because he's just he's just super good, super strong. Um, now one other thing that you have the ability to do here with Kairos that I haven't talked about yet is you can adjust the winds of magic flowing through specific regions. Uh, and one of the reasons that you might want to do that is if I go into the building browser here so you can see when winds of magic is strong or higher you generate additional income. Um, and so those can be important bonuses. So if you can boost your Winds of Magic to strong or higher, um, you actually get an extra 50% growth from this building, um, which is pretty pretty significant, right? Those are those are large benefits. It doesn't really apply to uh, um, the military buildings or advanced military buildings, but it is quite good um, for uh, for Siege, especially the kind of infrastructure buildings. Um, getting those additional benefits, especially in the early game, is um, is really quite good. So another building that you might build instead of the growth building is this one, because you do get some growth out of it, but you generate additional money. And if you look close at this, you know Zinch starts out um, quite poor. He takes a while to to really build up. Now the only faction that you're really at war with to start with is um, is the uh, bubonic swarm, but you do have a, uh, a non-aggression pact with this faction over here. There aren't a lot of particularly dangerous factions over here, um, but the lore masters can get decently strong um, pretty quick, and this other faction that you have a non-aggression pact with um, is actually uh, the strongest in the area kind of thing. Even your faction isn't particularly strong to, to start out with, so um, usually in the first few turns you'll see Sartorio's Watchers die to the Order of the Lore Masters. That's why, um, you know, getting, heading them off kind of as quickly as you can can be a really good strategy. Um, and that's all I've kind of got for uh, for this Getting Started Guide. Kairos is a really fun lord to play. Um, and if you like the content, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel for more in the future. Thanks for watching.